writers, and welcome to this discussion on Natalie Goldberg's essay titled The Rules for Writing Practice from her book Wild Mind. Because so many of us are visual and auditory learners, I thought I would slow down a bit and spend some time reading the essay to you so you can kick back, relax, and listen. For 15 years now, at the beginning of every writing workshop, I have repeated the rules for writing practice, so I will, repeat, I will repeat them again here. And I want to say why I repeat them, because they are the bottom line, the beginning of all writing, the foundation of learning to trust your own mind. Trusting your own mind is essential for writing. Words come out of the mind, and I believe in these rules. Perhaps I'm a little fanatical about them. A friend teasing me said, you act as if they're the rules to live by, as though they apply to everything. I smiled. Okay, let's try it. Do they apply to sex? I stuck up my thumb for rule number one. Keep your hand moving. I nodded yes. Index finger rule number two. Be specific. I let out a yelp of glee. It was working. Finger number three. Lose control. It was clear that sex and writing were the same thing. Then, number four, don't think, I said. Yes, for sex too, I nodded. I proved my point. My friend and I laughed. Go ahead. Try these rules for tennis, hand gliding, driving a car, making a grilled cheese sandwich, disciplining a dog or a snake. Okay, they might not always work. They work for writing. Try them. Rule number one, keep your hand moving. When you sit down to write, whether it's for 10 minutes or an hour, once you begin, don't stop. If an atom bomb drops at your feet eight minutes after you have begun and you were going to write for 10 minutes, don't budge. You'll go out writing. What is the purpose of this? Most of the time when we write, we mix up the editor and the creator. Imagine your writing hand as the creator and the other hand as the editor. Now bring your hands, your two hands together and lock your fingers. This is what happens when we write. The writing hand wants to write about what she did Saturday night. I drank whiskey straight all night and stood at a man's back across the bar. He was wearing a red t-shirt. I imagined him to have the face of Harry Belafonte. At 3 a.m. he finally turned my way and I spit into the ashtray when I saw him. He had the face of a wet mongrel who had lost his teeth. The writing hand is three words into writing this first sentence. I drank whiskey. When the other hand clenches her fists, fingers tighter, tighter, and the writing hand can't bulge. The editor says to the creator, now that's not nice, the whiskey and stuff. Don't let people know that. I have a better idea. Last night I had a cup of nice warmed milk and then went to bed at nine o'clock. Write that. Go ahead. I'll loosen my grip so you can. If you keep your creator hand moving, the editor can't catch up with it and lock it. It gets to write out what it wants. Keep your hand keep your hand moving, strengthens the creator, and gives little space for the editor to jump in. Keeping your hand moving is the main structure for writing practice. Rule number two, lose control. Say what you want to say. Don't worry if it's correct, polite, appropriate. Just let it rip. Allen Ginsberg was getting a master's degree from Columbia University. Back then they were doing rhymed verse. He had a lot of practice in formal meter and so forth. One night, he went home and said to himself that he was going to write whatever he wanted and forget about formalities. The result was the book Howl. We shouldn't forget how much practice in writing he had prior to this, but it's remarkable how I can tell students, okay, say what you want, go for it, and their writing takes a substantial turn towards authenticity. Rule number three, be specific. Not car, but Cadillac. Not fruit, but apple. Not bird, but wren. Not a codependent neurotic man, but Harry, who runs to open the refrigerator for his wife, thinking she wants an apple, when she's headed for the gas stove to light her cigarette. Be careful about those pop psychology labels. Get below the label and be specific to the person. But don't chastise yourself as you're writing. I'm an idiot, Natalie said to be specific, and like a fool, I wrote tree. Just gently wrote, note that you wrote tree, drop to a deeper level, and next to the tree, write sycamore. Be gentle with yourself. Don't give room for the hard grip of the editor. Rule number four, don't think. 
We usually live in the realm of second or third thoughts, thoughts on thoughts, rather than in the realm of first thoughts, the real way we flash upon something. Stay with the first flash. Writing practice will help you to contact first thoughts. Just practice and forget everything else. Now, here are some rules that don't necessarily apply to sex, though you can try to apply them to sex if you'd like. Rule number five, don't worry about punctuation, spelling, grammar. Rule number six, you are free to write the worst junk in America. You can be more specific if you like. The worst junk in Santa Fe, New York, Kalamazoo, Michigan, Ventura County, your city block, your pasture, your neighborhood, restaurant, your family, or you can get more cosmic, free to write the worst junk in the universe, galaxy, world, hemisphere, Sahara Desert. Rule number seven, go for the jugular. If something scary comes up, go for it. That's where the energy is. Otherwise, you'll spend all your time writing around whatever makes you nervous. It will probably be abstract, bland writing because you're avoiding the truth. Hemingway said, write hard and clear about what hurts. Don't avoid it. It has all the energy. Don't worry, no one ever died of it. You might laugh or cry, but not die. I'm often asked, well, isn't there a time when we need to stop our hand moving, you know, to figure out what we want to say? It's better to figure out what you want to say in the actual act of writing. For a long time, I was very strict with myself about writing practice. I kept that hand moving no matter what. I wanted to learn to cut through to first thoughts. Sure, you can stop for a few moments, but it is a tricky business. It's good to stop if you want, look up and get a better picture of what you're writing about. But often, I don't stay there. If I give myself a little gap, I'm off for an hour daydreaming. You have to learn your own rhythm, but make sure you do some focused, disciplined, keep the hand moving to learn writing, to learn about cutting through resistance. If you learn writing practice well, it is a good foundation for all other writing. When I was young, I played tennis. My arm wasn't very strong and I was impatient. I was so eager to play, I held the racket up higher on the grip than I was supposed to in order to compensate. Unfortunately, I got used to using the racket this way. I was a fine tennis player, but no matter how much I played, there was just so far I could improve because I never mastered one of the important basics, the proper grip on the racket. I use this as an example for writing practice. Grow comfortable with it in its basic form before you begin to veer off into your own manner and style. Trust it. It's as basic as drinking water. Sometimes an interviewer asks me, so writing practice is old hat. Have you developed something new? And I say, it would be like a Zen master teaching you meditation one year and then the next year saying, forget compassion, standing on your head is what's in. The old essentials are still necessary. Stay with them under all circumstances. It will make you stable, something unusual for a writer. I hope you enjoyed the reading. I hope you annotated and found some juicy golden lines and things that just sparked interest for you, things that are inspiring you. And remember, these are the rules of writing practice. Some of them are gonna come more naturally to you. Others you're gonna forget about entirely. But as we navigate through this semester together, I want you to please keep these writing rules in the back of your pocket so you can bust them out anytime you need to. For, for instance, there might be a time when you need to just follow the rule that asks you to just lose control. And other times, you might just find yourself needing to keep your hand moving so that you don't get stuck in your head and you allow your first thoughts to explode on the page. Have a wonderful rest of your day.